Hey everybody, welcome back. Today I'm bringing you part 6 of my inflation RPG walkthrough. This episode is mainly going to focus on some ways to get yourself ready for your 100,000 level run, as well as some drop locations and a bit about exclamation point, triple exclamation point, and triple question mark zones. Alright, so first let's move into an efficient strategy for farming the weapons you need. At this point your gear should carry you a little bit, so it's beneficial when trying to farm an item obtained by a drop to focus at least 30,000 stat points into luck before fighting the monster that drops it. This does not mean that if you can just barely make it to an enemy without putting any stat points into luck, that you should just give up though, as you always still have a chance at the item, even if it's just a slight chance. So basically what this means for allocating stat points is that you should only put the attack, defense, and HP you absolutely need, otherwise the rest should all go to luck. Now, there's three different types of farming in this game. Boss farming, enemy farming, and lastly, sweep farming. On a boss farm, you want to focus on one to three bosses from which you need drops. Now, the difference here is that you'll be killing only specific enemies, which always spawn. So therefore, every time you play, so long as you kill the boss, it's a guaranteed one chance per run. That being said, you want to put as many stat points into luck as possible before you head into the battle. I would often use most of my battle points up at this point, getting my luck up as high as possible before I fought the boss. Remember though that 200,000 luck is the cap, so after that point your luck will have very little effect on your drop chance. When farming bosses, it's best to get as many attempts in in as little time as possible. One tip for if you want maximum efficiency, once you've killed the last boss on your list, if you don't receive anything, then exit that run and try again rather than wasting time using up the rest of those remaining battle points. Now let's move on to enemy farming. Basically the dynamic here changes a little bit because you'll have multiple chances at the same item in each run. What you'll want to do is focus on getting to the area which spawns the correct enemy while using as little battle points as possible. The best thing you can do here is kill most of the bosses to get battle points. The only bosses to avoid when it comes to battle points is the red and green light dragon. They end up being far enough away that there's a chance you'll waste a couple battle points going for them, so unless you have an item to farm from one of them, it's suggested to skip them. Now once you're nearing the zone that you need to farm in, as long as you know that you can kill the enemies confidently, then equip a luck setup and put all the stat points from then on into luck and start farming in that area. If you want to be absolutely efficient here, try to have about 10 to 20 or more battle points once you start farming and utilize battle point rings, they are your friend here. Now, the most common method of farming, and my favorite method, is sweep farming. Here, you're not focused on any specific one item, but instead it's good to have a small list of five or more items to go for at once. This style is a combination of the two previous, and I suggest balancing luck with about a quarter of your attack and defense throughout the run consistently, unless you hit 200,000 luck. When performing a sweep run, you'll kill a number of different bosses and enemies, so there's a small strategy involved. The best method for a sweep run starts by getting to the map which has a few drops that you need. Once at that map, kill all of the bosses in each area first, excluding the boss which transports you to the next map. Remember to equip a luck setup on the bosses in which you'd like to receive drops. And then move on to the enemies areas which you'd like to receive drops from, moving up the list as you receive them. If you're running low on battle points, think about whether it'd be more beneficial to go to the next boss, which has a drop you need, or if it'd be too far away. If the boss that will transport you has a drop you need, but you're still farming enemies on that map, then kill that boss on your last battle point. Also, don't forget to use your battle point rings here when you're starting to run low. Now, let's move on into some ways to prepare you for your 100,000 level run and hard mode. For your 100,000 level run, as we know, the S stock plus one is sufficient, but what about once you've hit hard mode? Well, seeing as the S stock plus one is a late game weapon, it won't do much for us in hard mode yet, seeing as we won't make it far enough for the switch to be useful. Instead, we've got to find ourselves an early game weapon and possibly some early game armor too. One decent weapon is the Tomahawk with 35,000 base damage, but it will be easily trumped because it only has an attack bonus of 110%. A better alternative might be the Crystal Hammer, with a base 20,000 attack and 290% damage bonus. The best weapon you could probably get to start hard mode though would have to be the 4 gods red lance, which is dropped by Suzaku in the 50,000 level zone. It will give you a base attack of 25,000 and an attack bonus of 380%. All that being said, it is possible to start hard mode with something like the red light sword, however it may be a bit harder to pull off. 
Now, as for armor to start hard mode, similar to the S-Doc Plus One, the rare armor or light armor won't be affected for starting hard mode. Instead, you'll need something like the Crystal Cape, which is dropped in the 43,000 zone by the White Woman. It gives a base defense of 8,000 and a defense bonus of 290%. The Crystal Cape is definitely capable in this situation, however if you're looking for a better alternative, you could go for the 4 Gods Green Armor. The interesting thing about this piece of armor, unlike all the other 4 Gods items, is that it can be dropped not only by the boss in the 58,000 zone, but also by a specific enemy. The armor is dropped by both Biako, which is the boss, as well as the Green Dragon in the same zone as the boss. The green dragon has a much lower chance to drop it and is a terribly low spawn rate. However, it gives you a much easier time receiving this item when you get a couple chances per run compared to just one. This armor gives a base defense of 12,000 and a defense bonus of 350%. And those stats at this point are phenomenal. I usually shoot for the four gods green armor at this point because of the great defense, but the crystal armor will definitely suffice. Now, I'd like to talk a bit more about the special bonuses like the exclamation point, triple exclamation point, and triple question mark zones, and touch on some stuff that I haven't spoke about previously. So let's talk about the requirements for exclamation point and triple exclamation point zones in both normal mode and hard mode, as well as a strategy for which weapons are easiest to obtain in order to unlock these zones. The triple exclamation point zone has a requirement that will already be obtained if you go for the exclamation point zone, so I'll focus less on that requirement. But, to access the triple exclamation point zone, you'll need a total of 19 normal mode weapons, or 12 normal mode armors for normal mode, and 51 of any weapon, or 26 of any armor in hard mode. Now, for the exclamation point zone, you need a total of 37 normal mode weapons to access it in normal mode, and 66 of any weapon to access it in hard mode. So now I'll go into some weapons that will be easy to get for these requirements. For normal mode, start off by getting all the weapons you can buy in the store. This should get you a total of 14 weapons to start. Then, for the next 23 weapons, they all come as drops. The Kukri knife is super easy to get and drops from the fox boss in the first area. Next, the Steel Axe is another easy one, and it's dropped by the Troll Axeman in the 1000 zone, in the area to the left of the starting area. And then the Broadsword is another quick one, dropped in the desert area to the right of the first area, in the 1222 zone, by the Skeleton Swordsman. The Scimitar is another one in the desert area, dropped in the 1333 zone, by the Six Armed Warrior, or Anubis. Another weapon dropped in the same zone as the Scimitar is the Battle Axe. I featured this weapon previous, and it's dropped by the 6 armed warrior, as well as the 4 armed skeleton. And the last weapon in this desert area is the trident, which can be dropped by the scorpion warrior in the 2222 zone. This makes a total of 20 weapons, without moving more than one area from the spawn, so 17 more to go. The next 8 are relatively straightforward, they are the fire, wind, thunder, and ice swords, as well as their respective plus one versions. All of the original elemental swords can be dropped by the enemies in the area which their respective elemental boss resides. That means that the fire sword is dropped in the 10,840 zone, the thunder sword is dropped in the 12,000 zone, the wind sword is dropped in the 12,400 zone, and the ice sword is dropped in the 13,111 zone. They are all dropped by a weird dark girl-like creature holding an orb which is colored to represent the element of which sword it drops, red for fire, yellow for thunder, green for wind, and blue for ice. The plus one versions of these swords are dropped by the bosses in each of these zones I mentioned. Now, the next nine weapons are a little bit scattered, so I'll do my best to explain their locations. The closest weapon to the start at this point is the Dark Axe, which is dropped in the same area as the Eye Boss, in the 4170 zone. It is dropped by the Red Demon Axe Man. Another weapon close by is the Dark Sword, which can be dropped in the area that you are taken to once you kill the Eye Boss. It's dropped in the 5300 zone by the Insect Warrior. Another weapon to get is the Silver Spear. If you add south one zone from where you get the Dark Spear into the second castle area, you can find this weapon in the 8370 zone. It is dropped by the Dragon Knight. Next, I'll pair up the Knight Rapier and Knight Spear because they're both dropped in the 10,000 zone. The Knight Rapier is dropped by the Black Knight, and the Knight Spear is dropped by the White Knight. The next two are pretty rare drops and may be skipped, but they are the Rare Sword and Rare Gladius. 
The rare sword is dropped in the 13,333 zone, which is in the same area as the wind boss, and the rare gladius is dropped in the 13,666 zone, which is in the same area as the ice boss. The enemies that drop this are named Suki and Fuki, and they're easily noticeable because they're the only enemies in this area which are holding weapons and are human. As for the next two, I'd suggest the s stock and s stock plus one because they're useful during your runs and you'll likely have picked them up along the way anyway before this. The s stock is dropped in the 24,900 zone by a woman knight, and the s stock plus one is dropped in the 44,444 zone or the 45,200 zone by the celestial warriors male and female. Now, if you decided to skip the rare swords, the alternatives are the red and green light swords dropped by their respective light dragons. These swords may have also been used to progress previous to this, so you may already have them. And that makes a total of 37 weapons, granting you access to both the exclamation point zone and the triple exclamation point zone in normal mode. For hard mode, I won't go into detail until a later video. However, I will say that the 67 weapon requirement for the exclamation point zone in hard mode is massive. It takes you getting mostly all the normal mode weapons, including all the ones from the special zones, and also quite a few hard mode weapons on top of this. So this is why that no weapon that you get is truly useless in this game, and it's beneficial to keep any weapon you get regardless of how the rest of the run goes. Now, I'd like to go into detail about the triple question mark zone. This zone drops a number of different items, including many weapons and armors, and plenty of accessories. The way this zone works is that it has three different spawn groups. For reference, I'll call them Group A, B, and C. Group A consists of four different girls that will drop various different helpful accessories. The best drops to note from this group are the Recovery Necklace and the Critical Rate Ring. Moving on, Group B has an Elephant Warrior, a Golden Ship, and a woman in a red and white cloak. Group B has no drops, but the enemies here drop a lot of gold. And finally, Group C is a bunch of different armored Egyptian men, as well as two different four-armed enemies. Each of the enemies in this group drops their own unique weapon and armor, so for the hard mode exclamation point zone requirement, this group helps a lot. One thing to note is that if you come across a triple exclamation point zone, with many chances, if you come across an enemy from a specific group in that triple question mark zone, then that is the only group that will spawn in that specific triple question mark zone. Another thing to note is that if there are two triple question mark zones in the same area, their groups may be different than one another. So check each triple question mark zone along the way if you're looking to farm a specific group. And the last thing to mention about the triple question mark zone is that a couple enemies don't spawn unless the zone level is over 5000. After level 5000, any zone can give you any enemy in the triple question mark zone. This does not apply for the girl who drops the recovery necklace. She can be found in any triple question mark zone now, let's move on. When you're going into hard mode, you'll find that it's harder to progress because enemy strength scales fairly quickly. A couple things that can really help for progression in hard mode are EXP gems plus 3 and 4, the battle point rings plus 2 and 3, and last but probably the most important is the stat point crystal. I've mentioned each of these accessories before, but at this point in the game, the accessories become much more needed to carry on. Apart from the battle point rings, which generally just help for item farming or in a pinch. The good news about hard mode is that once you receive your first hard mode weapon and armor, it makes it 10 times easier to backtrack to normal mode for things like the stat point crystal, XP gems, and battle point rings. Now let's move on and finally talk about the runs I've featured in this video. On the first run, I spent the whole run focused on getting the S stock plus one. I killed all the bosses along the way as I still needed the drops from the light dragons. I made it to heaven with very little battle points left, but I got lucky and got the S-Dog plus one anyway. Which is good because the S-Dog plus one is potentially strong enough to pull off a 100,000 level run. I finished my run quickly after that and moved on to my next goal, which was to unlock the exclamation point and triple exclamation point zones. The next two runs are extremely lucky, and I'm just going to list off the items I got during run two quickly first, then move into run three. First off, I farm a silver spear from the 8370 zone. Then I move on and I get lucky getting a thunder sword plus one from the boss. Then I go and farm a wind sword and a fire sword quickly after. Next, I get really lucky and get into a triple exclamation point zone. One of the enemies in here drops me a cursed sword. Then I move on to the ice boss and get an ice sword plus one as the final drop of this run. 
Overall, this run was ridiculously lucky, and I got a total of 6 different weapons in the sweep run. On my third and final run, I do another sweep farming run. Overall, this run was ridiculously lucky, and I got a total of 6 different weapons in the sweep farming run. On my third and final run, I do another sweep farming run, and it also goes very well. I start off farming for a steel axe, and it takes me a little bit, but I end up receiving it. With not much luck elsewhere, I end up getting into a triple exclamation point zone and receiving a cursed axe. And then I also got my third revival necklace during this run, which is cool, but not necessarily beneficial. After that, I continue to try farming more weapons with no luck. However, I made it all the way to the grid, adding a decent amount of character XP because of the level I got. And that wraps up the runs I featured for you guys today. Within the next couple runs, we'll be doing a 100,000 run and then featuring the first few hard mode weapons you might like to search for. And that's all I've got for you guys today, but I would like to say that I'm super proud of how well these videos are turning out. And I'd really like to thank everyone who's been helping support this channel with the vision that I have for it. That being said, I'd like to touch on the style of my channel. As for right now, and the next few weeks, I will only be featuring content about Inflation RPG. Once I'm feeling comfortable, I want to add in a second series to this channel and make it an all-out active gaming channel. Now what this means is I need you guys to help me decide what game I play. I currently own a PS4, a PC, and a mobile phone, so I can pick a game from those selections. Some games I would love to record and play is the Kingdom Hearts series, Dragon Age Inquisition, and possibly Old School RuneScape. However, I'd really like to hear you guys' feedback. If you have a suggestion for a game, or you like one of my suggestions, let me know in the comment section down below. Other than that, I really hope you guys enjoyed this video and found it informative. If you found any of this information useful, feel free to hit that like button, it really helps me out. And if you're looking forward to more gaming videos from me, you can subscribe to be notified when I upload a new one. Thank you guys so much for watching, have a great day, and I'll catch you next time for part 7 of my Inflation RPG walkthrough.